Everybody wave your hands. Come on, let me see your hands in the air. Let's see who can wave the fastest. Come on, let's shout as loud as we can shout. God is here right now. Yes, He's here without a doubt. Yeah, He is always with us through every up and down. He will never leave us. He'll always be around. He's the one. Good morning, K3-5 friends. Thanks for joining our Sunday worship. I hope and pray that everyone is safe and well. We have a few reminders and announcements. First of all, the Church School Golden Bell is coming up very, very soon. So please check with your department to find out the dates. And secondly, we're continuing to do our devotions with QTN and there is a summer QTN challenge as well. So make sure you learn more about this uh, with your pastors and teachers. All right, it's time to divide, dive into today's passage. Samuel was a judge over Israel. When he was old, Samuel chose his sons, Joel and Abijah, to be judges. There was a problem though. Joel and Abijah were not good judges like their father. Joel and Abijah were unfair and dishonest. The leaders of Israel went to Samuel. You were a good judge, they said, but your sons have not followed your example. We don't want them to lead us. We want a king like the nations around us. Samuel wasn't sure how to respond, so he prayed to God. God said, Samuel, they are not rejecting you, they are rejecting me as king. Give them what they want, but make sure you warn them what it will be like to have an earthly king. Samuel explained to the Israelites what rights an earthly king would have. A king could make their son serve in the army, he could make their daughters work for him, or he could take away their fields and servants. Samuel warned that the people would regret asking for a king, but the Israelites didn't care. Give us a king they said. So God told Samuel to give the people what they wanted. Then Samuel told the leaders of Israel to go back to their cities and wait for a king. One day, a man named Saul came to Samuel. Saul was tall and handsome. He was looking for his father's missing donkeys. Samuel invited Saul to have dinner with him. He told Saul that his family would be important to everyone in Israel. Saul didn't understand. He wasn't from a big family. His tribe, the tribe of Benjamin, was the smallest tribe in Israel. Still, Samuel gave Saul the best spot at his dinner table. The next morning, Samuel poured oil on Saul's head. You will be king, Samuel said. Samuel gave Saul some instructions and sent him home to wait for the right time to start ruling over the Israelites. The Spirit of God was with Saul. God intended for a heavenly king to rule over Israel, but the Israelites did not trust God's plan. They wanted a king like the nations around them. God had a better plan to eventually send his son, Jesus, to be the perfect king forever. Today's Bible story comes from a passage, 1 Samuel chapter 8, verses 6 through 9. 1 Samuel chapter 8, verses 6 through 9. But when they said, give us a king to lead us, this pleased Samuel. So he prayed to the Lord. And the Lord told him, listen to all that the people are saying to you. It is not you that they are rejected, but they have rejected me as their king. As they have done from the day I brought them out of Egypt until the day, forsaking me and serving other gods that they are doing to you. Verse 9, now listen to them, but warn them solemnly and let them know what the king who will reign over them all claim as his rights. Amen. We're going to start today's sermon with a small activity. I'm going to ask you to draw, so please find a piece of paper and a pen or colored markers. 
Okay, if you're ready, why don't we draw a king? Let's draw it together. After you drew a king, then let's write down some of the characteristics of the perfect king. What do you think? A perfect king is probably powerful, determined, wise, strong, loving, caring, charming, charismatic, inspirational, and many more. Well, good job, everyone. Why are we talking about a perfect king? Well, in the next few weeks, in the book of 1 Samuel, we're going to read about the kings of Israel. But before that, we must learn how the kingship of Israel all started. So let's find out. It can happen to any of us. We look at our circumstances and situations, predict a coming trial or opportunity, and act accordingly. But sometimes the situation doesn't play out as we expected. It wasn't much different in today's passage, 1 Samuel chapters 8 through 10. Samuel was getting old, so he couldn't be the judge of Israel anymore. So he chose his son, Joel and Abijah, to be the judges. But there was one problem. Unlike Samuel, Joel and Abijah weren't good judges. They were unfair and dishonest. They didn't love God. That was when the Israelite leaders came to Samuel and said, you are a good example of judge, but your sons have not followed your example. We don't want them to lead us. We want a king like the nations around us. Samuel, as a God-fearing and God-loving man, want to ask God. He went to God and prayed to God, God, they are right. My sons are dishonest and unfair. They're not good, but they demand a king. What should I do? And guys, do you know what God said to Samuel? He said, Samuel, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting me as king. Give them what they want, but make sure you want, warn them what it will be like to have an earthly king. Even though God was the true king of Israel, the Israelites wanted to be like all the other nations, and they didn't want to be different. They didn't trust God as a king. Just as God had told Samuel, Samuel went to the leaders and explained to them all the rights an earthly king would have. First, an earthly king could make their sons serve in the army. He could make their daughters work for them, or he could take away their fields and servants and everything they have. Samuel warned that the people would regret asking for a king, but the Israelites didn't care. They continued to demand a king. So let us pause here, guys. Do you remember the activity that we did in the beginning? Drawing a perfect king and writing down the characteristics of the perfect king. Do you think Israel can find this perfect king? Hmm, let's continue with the story. One day, a man named Saul came to Samuel. The Bible described uh, Saul as tall and good-looking and handsome. Why was he there? His father lost the donkeys, and Saul went out to find the lost donkeys. And there, he encountered the prophet Samuel. Samuel invited Saul to have dinner with him. And in the conversation, Samuel realized that Saul could be the first king of Israel. So he said, Saul, your family would be important to everyone in Israel. But Saul was confused because he wasn't from a big family. Do you know uh, Israel had 12 tribes? Out of the 12, do you know the name of the smallest tribe? The tribe of Benjamin. Saul was from the tribe of Benjamin. Uh, so he thought about you know, how his family was so small that he couldn't be used importantly for the whole Israel. The next day, Samuel called Saul, and he anointed Saul with this special olive oil. You will be king, Samuel said, and he gave Saul some instructions and sent him home to wait for the right time to start ruling over the Israelites. And listen to Samuel chapter 11, verse 6. It says, when Saul heard their words, the Spirit of God came powerfully upon him. 
Wow, a handsome and tall man named Saul became the king of Israel, the first king of Israel. Do you guys think Israel will be all peaceful and powerful after having a king? This is only the beginning, friends. Even though Saul was good in his appearance, he will find out, we are going to find out that Saul was still not a perfect king. We listed the characteristics of a perfect king. However, just as God warned the Israelites, there couldn't be a perfect king. But way later, we're going to find out that there is actually a perfect king who is loving, caring, compassionate, strong, wise, and magnificent. So let's all get into the time of prayer. Today we learned about how people rejected God as their true king, and God, who listened to their people, allowed them to have the king, and their first king, his name was King Saul. Let us pray together. Let's close our eyes, fold our hands, and bow down before the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your loving, caring, and compassionate heart for us. Just like the Israelites, God, we so many times reject you. So many times we reject you as our king. And we turn our eyes and our hearts to the things around us, thinking that they are our king. But Father, we repent our heart before you. Even though you are our true king, our eyes were blinded, our hearts were blinded, and we couldn't recognize you as our king. Father, forgive us. But Lord, we also ask you that will you please open our hearts and our minds to see that you are the true king who reigns over our lives. And Father, even though we desire to have a perfect king who has all these beautiful characteristics, it is so difficult to find one. But Lord, we trust you and we know that Jesus is the true king who is loving, caring, and compassionate. Father, we pray that our friends may continue to remember this beautiful truth of the gospel. And as we are continuously learn about 1 Samuel and all the kings of Israel, let us remind us that we are still sinful and wicked, but yet by your grace and your death and resurrection that we are all free from our sin, that we're washed away, that we're forgiven in you. Thank you, Father. We pray everything in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Hi there, I'm Pastor Kevin. It's time for questions from kids. Tristan from Valley Falls, Rhode Island asks, My friend sometimes tries to get me to do things that I know are wrong. What should I do? That is a good question. You know, some friends don't understand right from wrong. And so they may have us doing things or trying to do things that they don't even know are wrong themselves. Now, some friends do know right from wrong and they just want us to do the wrong thing. Uh, in addition, sometimes our hearts want to do the wrong thing, even though we know that it's the wrong thing. That's where we find ourselves a little bit in our Bible story today. So what I would encourage you all to do is to first pray. Pray to the Lord that he would give you the courage to always do the right thing. I also want to encourage you to talk to an adult. Seek wise counselors. If the Israelites said always and continually remember to go to the scripture, and to seek God's counsel instead of their own counsel, they would have found themselves in less peculiar situations. So always talk to an adult about what are the right and wrong things to do. I also want to remind you to don't do them. Don't do the wrong thing. If you know something is wrong, don't do it. And pray and ask God for the strength and the courage to do the right thing. Jesus was an example of always doing the right thing. So, how can remembering Jesus help you do what is right? Oh, 
let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.